In today's video, I'm going to be getting the Platinum Trophy for Final Fantasy VII Remake. Oh yeah, look how cool we are! Let's get this party started! Chapter 1 is a fairly linear experience, and it will familiarize us with the battle system. And while going through this chapter, I got a ton of random miscellaneous trophies that have to do with the combat. We'll get this one here for finishing our first battle, we'll get this other one here for staggering an enemy, and this third one for exploiting an enemy's weakness. I think now is a good time to mention that I've actually already platted this game before on the PS4 version when it first released, but this got a PS5 re-release and I'm getting the trophy again because this game is just so amazing. Now a lot of people have a lot of issues with this game, with the flaws, like it's too slow, they change the story, the combat. There is one hill I'll die on though, and that is, well... <gasps> you double crossing! Heads up! What in the hell?! The bosses are amazing. Like, seriously, they are really good. If I were to make a top 10 list of my favorite bosses from all video games, bosses from this game would at least fill half of that list. Honestly, they feel like they could be other games' final bosses. This is only the first boss in the entire game, and it's like multi-phase, and it's just absolutely insane. I can go on all day about how much I love this boss fight and all the other ones, but let's just get back to business. While fighting this boss, he grabbed Cloud, and I saved him with Barret, which gave me this trophy. Oh, we have our first limit, boys. Let's do it. Cross slash on Scorpion Sentinel. Damn, that looked cool. After defeating the boss, I progressed my way through the story and got two trophies. One for completing chapter one and another for completing chapter two. In the next chapter, things are going to open up a little bit when we head to the Sector 7 slums, and here we're going to get to meet everyone's favorite character, Tifa. I wonder why everyone likes Tifa so much. Maybe it has to do with the fact that she has some very nice, um, uh, uh, very nice, uh, personality! Oh, and she also has ginormous titties. Anyways, trophies, trophies, trophies. So yeah, this chapter will introduce us to our first set of side quests, and we're gonna have to complete every single side quest in the game for the Platinum Trophy. They're all fairly simple. It's usually just something like, go to this area and kill this thing for me. Like this one here, the shopkeeper tells us to go kill some rats for him. We go kill the rats, we come back, and we're done, and then we get a trophy for completing our first one. I guess you could call these this game's main collectible, but there's the music CD things that you can collect from random people or buy them from stores. And you can see I'm going to get my third one here, which will give me a trophy. Hey man, check it out. <laughs> this it's guy. What my mixtape, bro? You like this is pretty good. Music collector, yeah! Copy. Song is Hip Hop the Chocobo. Now let's, let's go look that up real quick. On YouTube, FF7 Remake OST Hip Hop the Chocobo. All right, that, that looks like it's it. Go. Oh, shit. This shit is bussin'! Just like in the OG Final Fantasy VII and Crisis Core, this game utilizes Materia. Materia, we put in the slots that are on our weapon to give us like special spells and abilities, and the more we fight with them, the more we level them up. So here you can see I fight this dog and I level up my first Materia, which is gonna give me a trophy. Tifa limit on deck. Somersault. Here we go. That's <laughs> so sick. Honestly, like, Tifa's fighting style is probably my favorite in this game. It's just, she's just so cool. Boom! Materia for beginners. Our chakra materia improved. Sweet! Other than materia in this game, you also have abilities tied to the weapon. Every weapon has its own ability, and you need to use that weapon a lot and max out its proficiency to learn that ability permanently. And I know what you're probably thinking, like, oh my god, you have to max out the proficiency of every weapon? No, it's actually super simple. You can max out most weapons in a singular fight. All you gotta do is just spam the ability. The hardest part is probably getting the weapons, and even that is pretty easy. So right here, you can see that I utilize Tifa's dive kick ability, and it gives me this trophy for maxing out the weapon's proficiency. Okay, so this part here can save us a lot of time if we pick the right option. So we do not want to pick the top option. We want to pick one of the bottom two. And the reason is, is because this determines Tifa's dress she wears later on in the game. And we only get this option if we complete all the quests in this chapter. So the reason you don't want to pick the top one is because the top one is the default dress you will get if you do not do all the quests. So that means we just did all the quests for nothing if we pick the top one. So do not pick the top one. And we need to see all nine dresses for a trophy. I went with something exotic. 
Near the very end of the chapter, we'll have a chance to play this dart mini game, and it's very easy, and I have the right to say that, because I did this my first try. Like, jeez. But anyway, get the top score, and it will give you a trophy. And that will finish up chapter three. Chapter four will start with this crazy motorcycle minigame. At super high speeds, we're gonna be slicing down some Shinra troops, and eventually we'll meet this guy, Soldier Third Class Roach, who is a completely new character, and he's kinda crazy. I love this guy so much. <laughs> he's just like destroying his own guys. It like makes you wonder, like, why does he just do that to like Cloud, like so effortlessly blow up on his motorcycle? While fighting Roach, I have to make sure I end this fight with a majority of my health left. I think, like, I can't lose, like, a fourth of it or something. As you can see, I'm not doing so great of a job, and, um, I kind of failed. But it's okay, we'll have our revenge in a future playthrough. Near the end of the chapter, I got to witness one of my favorite staples in the series, which are the summons. Oh, the summon gauge is filled! I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it now is a good time. Ifrit, let's go. Do your thing. Oh, he's so sick. This is my favorite version of Ifrit, probably. He's so cool. My first summon! Yes, let's go! That's chapter 4 done, and then I immediately finished chapter 5 afterwards. In chapter 6, I was suspended high above the slums on these catwalks. And near the end here, instead of going on the one I have to go to towards the left, I need to go to this one straight ahead, which will take me off to the side here. I'm gonna have to do like some weird kind of minigame thing where I have to finish this battle in a time limit, and once I do, I'll be rewarded with this summoning materia, the Chocobo in Moogle, and it will give me a trophy. Do I even have to say what this next trophy is gonna be? We're finishing up a chapter, and we get a trophy for finishing chapter 6. The next chapter is one of my favorite chapters, and before we get to why, we're gonna have to do this mini game here. And this mini game is near the end of the chapter, and we're gonna have to pull these switches in the directions at the same time Tifa pulls them. It's kind of like a weird timing mini game, and we only have to do it once for the story, but if we do it an additional like three times, we will get this trophy. And here's why I like this chapter so much. Remember earlier on when I said this game has amazing bosses? Well, this one has my favorite boss, the Air Buster. Oh, baby, here we go! This is the best boss. I literally cannot even put into words how good this boss is. Like, this is perfect. Everything about it is just so cool, from the timer to the music, just the setting, the build up to it. Like, look at this. This is cool. This is a good boss. Like, pe developers, take notes on this. Multiple phases and everything. This is better than, like, almost every game's final boss. Phase three, this is when the real fight begins. Just fucking blows up the bridge. Oh my, dude. Oh, I'm getting so pumped. Oh, he's out there. Okay, this this Barrett's. Barrett's time to shine. Let's go. Let's go, Barrett. Tifa has her limit, so as soon as he comes in close, he's getting a lot of damage on him. Cloud almost has his as well. Oh, here he goes. Let's go. Tifa, get in there. Hit him with that sexy somersault. Oh, I just creamed. If Cloud could get his limit before he goes back out there, that'd be great. Oh, oh, thank you, bro. You just gave me my limit. Let's do this. Big damage. Woo! Bink! Yes. Parrot almost has his limit now, too. Oh, I should have saved all of the limits and used them all at once. That would have been cool. But I, I don't really think about that stuff until it's too late. He's probably going to go flying out soon. Again. Because he's been in here for a while. Oh, Tank Buster! This is the strongest thing. Ooh! Oh my god. <laughs> I didn't know he moved with it like that. Well, at least he gave me the limit. Alright, here we go. Ultimate Bink. Bink in the hole. Bink! Let's go. I like that motivation Cloud's giving us. <laughs> He's coming back in. More damage. Oh, I'll give it all I got, Tifa. Don't worry. Oh, he's so close to dead. There's a fourth phase? He's going into phase four? Oh, he's going fucking punching mode now. 
Another tank buster. Okay, run, 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 run. Okay, that was not a good idea, because now he's got me, like, freaking cornered with it here. <laughs> freaking Barret just, what the hell? Tifa, why'd you run him right into me? <laughs> Dude, this guy just doesn't give up. Cloud, get some big damage in, please. Make sure you're nice and healed. <laughs> okay. Very unfortunate that heal couldn't go off. Just get the... Dang! Shit. Oh. What did Barrett just say? Oh, is it, what? Oh, hiring you was a mistake. Dude, he just took freaking punches from the air buster for you. I don't even want to hear it. Another tank buster. This is going to be like the fourth or fifth one Barrett's going to... <laughs> he lived it, too. This dude survived like six Spartan lasers to the face. Just kill it, please. He's so close. This is it. This is gonna be it. This is gonna be it. It's done. It's done. You're done, dude. You're done. Yes! GG Airbuster. <laughs> Easy peasy. Now, moving into Chapter 8. This chapter is kind of similar to Chapter 3, where we're gonna be doing a lot of side quests during this chapter. One of those things I was able to do was I talked to this young man here, Chadley. Throughout the game, Chadley will get these VR missions we could do where we basically fight a summon, and when we defeat the summon, we get that summon. The first one we could do here is Shiva, and she is pretty easy to defeat, and upon defeating her, we'll get this trophy for completing our first VR mission. I went to go pick some flowers with Aerith, and because I am so stupid, I forgot to record it. So I'm gonna have to give you guys this Microsoft Paint picture I did real quick of what it looked like when we were collecting flowers. You can see Cloud right there and Aerith. And then we donated them to this orphanage and they set up this nice little thing here. And when we see it, we're gonna get this trophy. The final side quest of the chapter I did had me play this mini game called Whack a Box. So all you gotta do is just whack these boxes within the time limit to get a high score. It's very easy. I went in with like no strategy at all and got the high score my first try. I don't know what I need, but I think I did it. I did pretty well. There's like no boxes left. 35,000. That's gotta be it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, know your place, you stupid fucking kid. Now give me a trophy. Woo! Crate Annihilator. Let's go finish this chapter now. Chapter 9 is a huge chapter, and just like the last chapter, this is another one with side quests that will take place in one of the most famous areas in the game, Wall Market. Something cool about Wall Market is you'll notice quickly that this place has a lot of uh, interesting individuals, kind of like this lady. So, which course will it be? Oh, we, uh, oh yeah, last time I did this, I picked the luxury one when I pl plotted this before. I'm poor as fuck, so let's do <laughs> poor man's course. Make your way to the room and Cheap play. ass. And wait. Cloud? Aerith, it's gonna be fine. We're gonna get a nice hand massage for a hundred gil. This technique has certain risks. Huh? It's somewhat experimental. You may find it extremely pleasurable and rewarding. Why is the music like this? Wait. Absolutely not. You asked for this. Ooh. Now take it like a man. Oh! <laughs> oh my! <laughs> Guys, this lady, she kind of, she kind of, she kind of scares me. <laughs> At least it was our left hand. <laughs> Poor Cloud. Next, I did this side quest that had me doing a squat mini game, and I got a trophy for defeating the pro jewels. Two things I want to know about this. One, I'm a god because I did it my first try. Second, the guys in the background just won't shut the fuck up. Just listen to this. He's so far ahead. Thank god he fell. We might actually do this, despite the rough beginning. <laughs> Those guys in the background! Shut the fuck up! They're like cutting each other off! Oh my god. We got this, we got this, we got this. As long as they don't fuck up, just keep going. Shut up! 
those guys. You can do it, Jules. We're rooting we did it. We did it. We got it. Let's go. Yeah, that was much easier than I remember, actually. And we should get a trophy for this. I am now finished with the side quests in this chapter for now, because there are two routes you can take, and you can only take one route per playthrough, so I'm gonna have to do the rest in my hard mode playthrough. But here, you can see in the main story, we're doing this cool little dancing rhythm game. Kind of weird, right? Cloud never danced a day in his life as far as we know, and he knows how to do this dance that would normally take somebody literal months to learn. But at the end of it, we get Cloud's dress, and that will give us this trophy. That's all we got to do with the dresses in this playthrough. So we got Aeriths for doing all the quests in the previous chapter. We got Clouds for going a certain route in the quest this chapter. And we got Tifas for doing all the quests in chapter 3 and selecting Exotic. And once we get our first three in this section here, we will get this trophy. The next so many chapters don't have anything trophy related in them. So I completed chapters 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Chapter 14 is another ginormous chapter, because after this chapter, I'd consider it the point of no return, because we won't have access to the world anymore, because the game becomes incredibly linear after this point. So we're gonna have a ton of side quests we can do here. I did this one where I had to find some missing children who are in this graveyard and fight ghosts. I also had to find some chocobo who ran away, and look how cute they are. Oh, so adorbs. I also had this interesting interaction. That's wrong. Oh. Wrong, wrong, wrong. This is how you get down with this jam. I don't know. Oh. It was my favorite back in the day. Pay attention, kid. Oh my god. All in the hips. Uh. Wow. All right, dude. <laughs> Come on, little lady. Why don't you okay. What a. Yeah, dude. Definitely normal to be telling some girl to. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> now that we're away from that creep, we're back with our good old friend Jules. And this time, instead of squats, we're doing pull-ups. Basically the same minigame, but it's a little harder because you press the buttons in a different order. And again, those guys in the background won't shut the fuck up. I can't even focus. They won't shut up. If I had a dollar for every time that guy said that, I'd be a billionaire. Oh, thank God he failed. This is so close. Yes! Go! Woo! This game has a battle arena where you can take on solo or team challenges, which serve for an excellent place to upgrade your weapons proficiency. Especially weapons kind of like Barrett's melee weapons. Yes, Barrett the gunman has melee weapons and they look absolutely hilarious when he's using them like every attack is just so devastating and he's just like yelling random stuff at the enemies it's so funny finishing our first arena challenge will reward us with this trophy though continuing onwards with this side quest trend one quest had me find this dude's wallet and when i returned it to him i got this trophy I got to play some Whack-A-Box again and whack a ton of boxes. It's basically the same thing as last time. Very simple. I went in with no strategy and got the high score, no problem. This last one is really weird and random. I'm not really sure what the conditions are for this, but as long as you do all the side quests, I know it will be here. You will find some random note on the ground here, and when you pick it up, you will get this trophy. And now I'm basically done with every side thing I have to do in this playthrough. So after that, I just progress through the rest of the game, completing every chapter. Now I can finally begin my hard mode playthrough. Hard mode in this game is no joke. Basically, you can only do it your second playthrough because you have to unlock it by beating the game because your levels and gear and everything transfer over and all enemies are scaled to basically be fought at max level. Now, the thing that makes it hard is the fact that you're very limited on resources. You cannot recover mana anyway because you do not have items available to you. Items you just cannot use in hard mode. The only time you can replenish mana is by finishing a chapter and starting a new one. <laughs> so you really got to conserve your mana throughout this playthrough. And mana is important because it's your main way of healing. Since you can't use items, you got to spam cure all the time. All we got to do is just beat the game and do a few miscellaneous things along the way. Such as max out one of our character's levels, which is level 50. I collected the only music disc that I missed in my first playthrough, which was from this vending machine in the collapsed expressway. In Wall Market, there's this boss, the Hell House, that you have to fight as part of the story. And when I did this Platinum three years ago on PS4, this boss on hard mode, 
mode took me an entire weekend of trying to kill it. And I just could not do it for the life of me. And I remember I finally got it out of pure luck. However, in this playthrough, I am happy to say I did it my first try. I think it has to do with the fact that I entered the fight with almost full mana. When I did on PS4, I maybe had half of my mana. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. Arrow's gonna go off on him and he's gonna get fucking murked. Yes! Here we go! Big damage! Okay, if we can stagger him, this is a GG. First first try. If I beat this first try, I'm gonna... Come on. Yes! Okay, limit, limit, he's done! He's done! Woo! And... Bink! Woo! First try, dude! This took me, like... Three days when I did this on PS4. I am a legend. In Wall Market, I made sure to do the other route of side quests so I can get the last two side quests I need for the trophy. The second of those two had me fight this giant robot. He went down fairly fast. We had him basically just staggered the entire time. Kill him before he gets up. Yes! Haha! <laughs> we did it. This is the last quest, I think. So we just have to talk to this lady and I should get a trophy? Where is it? There it is! Best in the business! All side quests, done. I was completely shocked at how easy of a time I was having in hard mode this time around. Back in the day on PS4, I was like struggling big time. Now I'm just like running through it so easily. I don't know what I'm doing differently. I think I'm just playing more careful. There are a couple close calls I had though, like during this fight against Elagor. So you can see that both Aerith and Cloud died. And on Tifa, I did not equip any revive materia. And since this is hard mode, I can't use a Phoenix down on them. So all that means is... I had to play a super safe Tifa and just slowly dwindle down Elagor's health. And this took like 20 plus minutes. It was so slow that I ended up getting Tifa's limit break like multiple times. And even that wasn't still enough. I was so happy though when I finally did it. This is near the end of the story now. I decided to do the final VR mission with Chadley, which is Bahamut. Bahamut's a pretty tough boss. Not only does he have super strong attacks, but he'll start doing a countdown once you get him to pretty low health. And once that countdown reaches zero, he does Mega Flare, which is a huge devastating attack. Though this version of Bahamut's not too tough. We're going to fight a much stronger version of him later. But when we defeat this one, we will get this trophy for completing all of Chadley's battle intel reports. Okay, so here I'm fighting this fat chocobo so I can get a 300% stagger damage boost. So the first step we gotta do is stagger the beast. There we go, he's staggered. Now we're just gonna unleash everything on him. We're gonna get Aerith to two. Ray of Judgment, this is gonna put his thing up a lot, and now... There we go. I kinda messed up a bit, but we should still get it. Just a little more. Come on, Tifa! Come on! Yes, we did it! Now just kill him. Go, 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 go! Boom! <laughs> that was easy and kind of fun too. In another one of these simulator arena fights, I had to fight a Marlboro. And he was pretty easy to fight because all I did was spam level 3 magic on him every time he was about to use their infamous bad breath ability. And if you're wondering how I'm spamming magic on it so effortlessly, even though this is hard mode, it's because every time you start one of these arena fights, it replenishes your mana just for that fight, by the way. So it's pretty easy, and when I defeat him, I get this trophy. I did so well in that last Malboro fight, it actually kind of hurt me in terms of time efficiency because now I have to fight the Malboro again because I have to get hit by his bad breath ability for another trophy. It's time for the final boss of the game in hard mode. Sephiroth. Let's finish this. <laughs> Yeah, even the final boss wasn't so bad for me this time around. The only thing that made it slightly hard was the fact I entered this fight with literally no mana. But I did dwindle his health down. The fight was a really long time. And I did eventually take him down, which gave me this trophy for finishing the game on hard mode. We're on the home stretch, guys. Now, before starting my partial third playthrough for the remaining dresses, I decided to quickly go back to the simulator and take a few minutes to max out the proficiency of this final weapon to get the trophy for maxing out all weapons proficiencies. 
Super partial easy mode playthrough is commencing. The first thing we're gonna do during this, which is the only thing we have to make sure we do really, is during this motorcycle chase. You might remember I have to end it with like almost full health. I failed to do that the last two times. I didn't even try to do it in hard mode, to be honest. I just skipped to the mini game. So once we do this, which I did it incredibly easy this time because I'm on easy mode, we will get this trophy, Biker Boy. In Wall Market, if we make it to this point in the game doing absolutely no side quests, so we just rush through everything, we will get everybody's shittiest dresses, which is the last ones I need, and that will give me Dress to the Nines. I purposely saved this trophy for last. It's a three-person team versus top secrets. This is a gauntlet of super strong bosses. They're all bosses we've already fought before. Like, we fought Shiva before, and she was super easy the first time we fought her. But no, this time she is so rough, and she is only the first enemy, and I lost to her in my first attempt. My second attempt, I did significantly better. I took out Shiva with only a little bit of trouble. I have two limits, so if I can stagger her here, it's over. I'm just going to use one now because I don't think I'm going to stagger her in time. Yeah, see, she got up. Oh, we staggered her again with it! Okay. And now we can just use Tifa's. Let's first get that stagger percent up. Okay, she's dead. This is going to kill her. Guaranteed. Okay, she's using her limit. And Aerith, you get back here and fire. Look at this damage. Oh my god. Yes! That Shiva down... The second fight is Fat Chocobo, and to be honest, eh, he's still pretty easy. <laughs> Leviathan is the third fight, and he is pretty tough. He's only a little tougher than Shiva, but Shiva was pretty hard as well. It took some time, but I still managed to beat him my first attempt fighting him. The fourth fight, and the hardest fight by far, is Bahamut. This fight was nearly impossible for me. In fact, I think it is impossible for me to do with this build, because I got absolutely obliterated. And I got destroyed so hard, it was time for me to completely reevaluate my build, so I set up a new build. So this is the current setup I have. So Cloud and Aerith are both full-on magic users, and I set them up with the most amount of magic attack possible. And they just have different types of magic materia as well as magic up and mp up fully leveled up now tifa she's the interesting one i set her up she's not going to be doing damage really she's going to be feeding the other people atb and she does this by using atb assist is the most important thing so what this does is it fills up the rest of the party's atb meters when she uses a command two times in a row that's gonna be super important so she's like the breastfeeding atb to the rest <laughs> And yeah, that's going to be the strat. These two spamming magic, Tifa goes in and starts feeding them both ATB. And we'll just see how it goes. The one weakness this strategy has is, I like to call it the glass cannon, because it is so fragile. If I let them get out of, like, my magic, I'm basically screwed, because I have no survivability. Let's just try this, see how it goes. So we'll start with fire fire from cloud as well and tifa you can run in and start charging atb oh my god she's already like almost half dead and there's the atb charge and we just do it again more fire oh my dude okay focus on killing her just kill her just kill her just kill her Fire, 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 fire. Don't let her get up. If she gets up and starts doing shit, we're dead. Because we have no survivability. Oh. That was crazy. That was crazy. Needless to say, this strategy was pretty OP. Both Fat Chocobo and Leviathan got destroyed pretty easy. And then we went on to Bahamut. Here we go. Immediately. We're gonna have to immediately put this down here. Very fast before he has a chance to attack. Cast fire on him. And now Tifa, after this, is gonna run off to the side and hopefully distract him. There we go. Tifa is distracting him, keeping the people in the middle safe. Now we just freaking annihilate him. You guys keep going back to the middle while Tifa has him distracted and just keep casting magic on him, no matter what. Big damage, boys. Okay, now he's pressured. 
We're just gonna try to build as much ATB as we can with the ATB assist, get everyone to max ATB. We're not really gonna try to stagger him here because you just won't have the chance to do it. And he's gonna start activating his countdown. So get as much ATB as we can. Okay, everyone's almost at max. Now we're gonna wanna run away with everybody. Right, get everyone away because he's gonna make a huge explosion that's gonna do a lot of damage when he's done charging up. So everybody just fucking back the fuck off everyone stop running at him clown oh okay that's fine that's fine that's fine that's fine now we unleash we have to unleash on him right away and stun lock him with our magic everyone get in there and just unleash everything if he gets that move out we're done good 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 sweet okay tifa you go in and start building up atb for everybody they have to keep spamming magic or else we're done oh Aerith's not in her arcane ward Aerith, you're gonna have to get back uh, Cloud, Cloud's in it. Okay, Aerith, you're in it. Good. Because if they're in it, they do two magic instead of one. There we go. Quick, just keep spamming everything. I think if these get off, we're in the clear. Build more ATB. There we go. Yes! This is so it. This is going to be it. More fire. Aerith, you get back and hit him as well. Under with Aerith. There we go. He's going down fast. One more set of magic will do it. We have to get back. We have to use it now. Because if he gets up, we're done. Like, it's he, we're seriously done if we let him start attacking. Quick! Get it out! He's gonna kill us! Get the magic out. Please get it out in time. Please! Yes! Yes! Let's go! This is it, the final round. Now, this guy is way easier than the other ones. The only issue is we have the pressure of, if we lose, um, we have to do that all over again. So, I think a good strat here is just spam thunder on him as much as we can. Let's put down an arcane ward, though. We can do double the magic. And I think if we attack, we don't have the option to attack his limbs. Maybe we do later. Let's just attack him. Oh, yeah, this is going to be easy. Oh, he's going down quick. Okay. I don't think we're in any risk of losing to him, really. So just get back in the circle and keep spamming thunder. Oh, we have the option to attack his limbs now, I think. I saw that for a second. Yeah, his legs. You want to attack his legs because they do damage to him. And if you take out the legs, look at this. Look at this. Yeah, he falls down and does nothing <laughs> for a little while. So just keep spamming at him. Just at the legs, especially. When we have the chance. I don't know why they make this guy the last one. He's so pitifully easy. Like, look, he can't even do anything. And it's not like we're even, like, under high pressure right now. Oh, shit. Okay, I'm out of mana. That might be a bit of an issue. Aerith sells quite a bit, though. So I think we're good. Yeah, we're fine. We're fine. Tifa, though... Here's the issue, though. If Tifa dies, I cannot resurrect because she's the only person with a revival materia. Like I said, this is a very glass cannon type of build. I shouldn't be so nervous right now, but I am. I am because I don't have mana, and it's like, if I lose... Oh, I need to save Tifa. Oh, maybe... Just keep attacking him. We have to take out an arm, right? That's how we would do it. So... Right arm. There we go. We can't let Tifa die. She's dead. And she has her limit, too! We would have been able to... Okay. They're both dead! Oh my god, I might lose! I have no way of healing myself, by the way. Absolutely no way. So this is literally the health I have now is the health I have for the rest of the time. So do we just go in? Okay, he's down. Just DPS him, please. My health is going down. My health is going down. My health is going down. Why is my health going down? He wasn't even attacking me. Why am I almost dead? This, I am... We're gonna lose, aren't we? I have no way to heal. I'm out of mana. I can get a thunder off, I think. I want to do it inside that circle, though, because I have to make sure... I could... No, I can't summon. I don't know if summoning is the play either way. No, let's... Okay, lure him away from the thunder. 
Don't go in that red shit, because that's what's draining my health, I think. I say, okay. Lure him away from the circle, not the thunder. Did I say thunder? Okay. Do this on a leg, and then we fucking attack him. Oh! <gasps> it killed him! Yes! <gasps> that was so close! That was way too close! And the platinum! Let's go! Oh my god! You cannot make up how close that was. GG.